Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new PSL Highlights. We're round 11 here today. Spa, Belgium, iconic, flowing fast. Rouge Radion who comes to mind when I speak about this iconic track as we actually fly up through El Rouge as well. Going to be a really critical race in the championship hunt today. If we win the race and circumstances don't go right for other drivers, Bari, Yano, Lucas, we actually have the chance to take championship lead today. So, with that being said, the pressure's on and it's time to perform. Three races to go, including this one in this championship. Finalising and coming to a close in PSGL this season. Crunch time. Time to make stuff happen. And it's our second run here in Q1. You can see we're up on the Delta. And now we're more or less looking just to bring the car back home to the start finish line as we approach the end of sector two. You can see on the Delta, compared to my previous lap, we actually lost quite a bit of time in the previous lap and gained quite a lot of time on this run as well. Uh, so now, once I saw that, two and a half times up, I knew it was pretty signed, sealed and delivered to be in Q2 here at Spa. So, just coax it round the final chicane here. Don't lock up, don't make a mistake, don't spin, don't get wheel spin, and you can see coming through. And we do go all the way up into P8, what will be enough to get us through to Q2. Speaking of Q2, this is our final run in Q2 as well. Our first run in Q2 wasn't really that great, to be honest. Uh, we're currently P12, and of course, only the top 10 go through into the top 10 shootout. So, we have to nail this lap. If we do not improve on this lap time, we are out of qualifying. We will not be in the top 10. So no matter what, we have to find lap time. We have to put it on ourselves now to find the performance. And we are one tenth up here so far on this lap. Going to an 8.25 first sector. Throwing the car right, throwing the car left through the right hand up one more time and we're temp up on the delta and now throwing it into this oh so understeery downhill right hander now hard back on the power through the left hander what is famously known as no name and we're coming up to go on slight lift here in q2 more as a hesitation you can start to take that flat out and you can see we lost a little bit of time on the delta but i'm not too worried about that through the chicane, ending sector two, hard back on the power, still one tenth up, and you can see through the right hander, we didn't get the exit we wanted, we're losing time, and this will not be good enough to get us through to the top 10 shootout right now. So, I knew right now we have to nail this final chicane, we have to get it perfect, we have to hit the brakes as late as possible, hit the apex, get the rotation, get the traction, and you can see we hit the apex, we get the rotation, and we get the traction on the exit, gaining a temp in the final corners alone, and that puts us P3, and that will be enough to put us through to the top 10 shootout, and look how close it is, the top 10 only separated by 0, 7, 8 of a temp. Critically though, Yano, Lucas and Bari, all of my championship rivals are out in Q2 and will not be through to the final part of qualifying. So it's time to clutch up and put together our best lap of the week. Or hopefully put together our best lap of the week anyway and put ourselves with a great shot of pole position here. We're setting up the final corner. We're going on to the straight, opening DRS, flying down to turn one, critical to nail this. We hit the brake and you can see we slide a little bit wide. We did not get the RNG slide that you needed to get on turn one. What's critical in turn one in this game is to slightly lock the rear tires and it will pivot the car around the apex and give you a beautiful exit. And we just did not get that. And then you can see we are gonna be a 0.6 down at the end of the first sector. But all is not lost. Time to gain that time back. Time to send it. And 
through the left hand that you can see we're already gaining time back on the delta we're actually going green on the delta already so we gained basically a temp through that one section of turns alone down the downhill right hander hard back on the power already a temp up through the left hander hard back on the power and you can see we're gaining time hand over fist hitting the apexes perfectly getting the traction and we commit to the left hander through two on two temps up on the delta now coming up into the chicane fifth gear rotate the car short shift to sick rotate the car again hard back on the power three temps up on the delta and now kiss the curb on the inside hard back on the power purple in the middle sector three and a half temps up and we're still gaining time down the straight due to the better exit we was able to get into a high speed sector three through long shimon that out easily four temps up on the delta gotta spot our breaking point as good as we ever can and we do we hit the apex on the inside get the rotation nicely and now we're ending that five temps up and you can see that goes to a 40.0 provisional fastest what does end up p5 take away the first turn and we would be p2 in fact as well so Overall, very solid qualifying. Nicholas Longay did a fantastic lap. Genuinely amazing. Congratulations to him for pole position. And what could have been P2 for us is P5. But considering P5 is a bad lap for us, I will take that. That is very positive and highlights the pace that we had in this qualifying session. But now, five lights, lights out, and away we go here in Spa. And we're on the medium compound tyres. Jake Benham is critically on the hard compound tyres here and we have to make sure that we're ahead of him at the end of the first lap to maximise our later race potential. Shifting down to 7th to make sure that we're not too close to him going through Eau Rouge. Now hard on the battery. Alfred Butcher behind us in the slipstream of Jake and now we need to get past him in the end of this first sector. You can see we're late on the break. Jake is even later. He goes wide and we're going to swing around the outside of him through the left hander and that is going to give us p4 and that is oh so critical for this race now nicholas longate is on the soft compound tires daniel brisney medium ulas medium myself medium jake hard alfie butcher medium compound tires and then we have a flurry of cars on the soft compound tires behind us as well yeah, what mclaren was that you can see me asking what mclaren that was if you looked in the mini map there is a mclaren spun at the back and I was really hoping for it not to be Lucas, um, to be honest, because Lucas is a championship rival and I want to fight fair. I want to fight honourably and in a good way. And I want this championship to go down in a, in a good way and Probably. not to be decided by someone being taken out or spun or something like this. So I was happy to hear that it was not Lucas that got spun and we could continue the, the championship fight in the best way possible. And that would is of course with on track racing coming towards the end of lap one with p4 and just settling in starting to monetize manage our battery a little bit and now lap five that has repaid us as we're all over the back of daniel bris they were good battery and really good tires here in this race you can see getting a phenomenal exit from chicane three four temps away from bris only two temps now and we are in a really strong position to try and slipstream past from cars. That was the RNG slide I was talking about. You can see the rear tyres locked up slightly, gave me beautiful rotation, and now only two temps away from Bresley on the exit. I was running slightly higher wings in this race, which gave me better pace overall, and, uh, but of course at the detrimental effect of top speed. Deploying a lot of battery, Bresne go past Ulas. Ulas was clearly deploying a lot of battery as well. We go down the inside, side by side, and now you can see we go right round the outside of Ulas. It's critical on this apex to realise that the car inside just need extra space from the way that the angle of the apex turns around and slips around. So you also have to be careful with racing side by side through there. But with that being said, up into P3, and now we're right in line to try and capitalise on the DRS of Daniel Perez name. Will I call to me or Nicholas? And now you can see, lap seven in the DRS of Perez name and able to fly oh, down through straight past him in to a provisional P2, 1.6 seconds to Nicholas Longay up ahead. 
1.5 seconds to Nicholas Longay now up ahead. And it's so critical for me to nail this middle sector and close that gap down and try to get within his DRS zone at the end of this lap as well. As that gave me many more strategic options if he went for another lap or if he boxed. It was also critical to have that DRS effect also to help us later in the race. We're saving a bit of battery. You reckon he's in this lap? Okay. Yeah, and yeah, but do you think I need to know to lose the battery? And you can hear me asking my engineers um, if Longay will be in this lap. Do you think he's in this lap? I need to know so I can go back to or not. The reason what was so critical is if he was going to be boxing this lap, I needed to be within one second Yeah, but I need to ensure DRS for the main straight. You can hear me saying ensuring DRS for the main straight. And what that is about is when we come out the pit lane, the, the uh, DRS line is pretty soon after pit lane exit. And that gives at least four or five attempts of advantage down the pit straight. Uh, the back straight, I should say. So if I was not in his DRS, then that would be a huge disadvantage to me. If I was in his DRS, it would be a huge advantage to me and possibly could be taking the theoretical race lead. So it was really okay. critical to sort of understand this information. As it happened, Longay did not box anyway and stayed out and we boxed and we we're going to the hard compound tyres. And it's going to be very critical this lap to not burn battery, to be honest, and sort of play our cards right on this out lap. You can see pretty much nailed on the exit as well, as close to the wall as you can get. And now we have a good gap ahead, a good gap behind. And Ulas and Alfie and Wilson are 1.1 seconds behind us. And uh, we decided not to use battery on this lap. Um, turns out to be a mistake, to be honest, as you're going to see what happens later on. Nicholas Longay comes out the pit lane and we are side by side and we lift a little bit but Longay lifts even more and the game will chicken in and I could not lift anymore because if I started to lift and break more I'd be risking damage to the cars behind and risking brake checking them. Nothing I, I can do, do this. I don't want to race dangerous um, so now we're going to get swamped by three cars on the straight with a DRS but nothing we could do. I know that we have really good pace uh, going later in the race so it's time to keep focus, keep composed and look later in the race for opportunities to make the places back up. This race is not over. And lap 11, Little Longer has been able to navigate himself back into the race lead. Now here on lap 12, you can see Ulas is attacking Alfie and Nicholas Longay, and we've done a purple sector one all over the back of him, and now it's critical, we get a good exit, we do the switch back, we're on the battery, we're on the overtake, we look to the inside, we're late on the brakes, and we get the move done down the inside, and that was oh so critical for our race right now, and now we are back in the fight for the race win, and you can see we're pulling away from Ulas as we have much better grip at this phase of the race. Lap 12, lap 13, Ulas is now coming back yeah, at us. Really great team he's one. deploying the battery and yeah, he's great. really starting to attack us. And we're happy to deploy the battery to defend. He looks to the inside, we look to the outside of Alfie. And now we sweep back in 2P3. We had to use a lot of battery in that defense, so it was not optimal, but it's something we have to deal with now for the rest of the race as holding P3 was very critical in that situation. And now Ulas is all over the back of us again. As I said, he's running lower wings and he's really starting to push us down the straight. And we're losing the bit of slipstream for the cars ahead as I didn't want to use battery. And now we're going to go side by side with Ulas around the outside. And you can see he just pushes me wide. And yeah, as I talked around that apex earlier, about that apex earlier, you have to what? leave room for the car on the inside as the angle of the corner is very unique. And you can see um, with a slow motion replay, we leave him space on the inside and he just gets on the power and is uh, pushing us wider and wider. Um, yeah, so we made contact on the apex because he did not leave me racing room. And then you can see the car is sliding there as a result. And yeah, we didn't need to be doing this. We're losing touch, we're losing battery, we're losing tires, we're losing performance to the cars ahead. So now um, we are back on the attack because it's very critical we get this position back so we can be back within the chance of fighting 
for the race lead in the slipstream and he goes defensive we're going to look to the outside we're going to be late on the brakes we go around the outside of him and now we're well ahead of him and he turns in and this gives May, wing damage and now we're going around the outside and we get pushed off the track what? and yeah uh we're going to go back into a slow motion replay of this again um, and you can see going around the outside, we're behind, but we break phenomenally late, late on the brakes. Going around the outside, and you can see the car from my side is completely under control. We're not sliding the rear, we're not really sliding the front, and we're definitely ready to meet the next apex. And Ulas turns in really like we're not there, and we even have to go off the inside line, getting track invalidation to avoid him. Um, but we was not able to avoid contact enough and we got front wing damage from that incident of being turned into and then yeah uh salt into the wounds let's say uh we got pushed off the track on the exit here ulas did apologize to me after the race uh so i accept the apology and as a racer i understand but it's something i hope not to be repeated going forward and that was the agreement and the understanding that we came to um so yeah i don't hold grudges i understand racing is racing but this also has given me front wing damage and it has made this race oh so more difficult for me and oh so more difficult for the championship charge that we have with the damage we've fallen off the back of the car's head so we don't have the slipstream anymore and was having to use the battery to try and defend from marcel who has much better battery right now than us and is able to fly past on the straight and we're defenseless. We're completely defenseless with the damage that we have. Lucas is now on the soft compound tires behind us as well. And we have very little to no battery to do anything. So now you can see uh, we're in the slipstream of Marcel a little bit. But we're not close enough to really utilize it. Lucas is behind us deploying the battery using the grip. Yeah, that nothing has. I can do. You can hear me saying nothing, nothing I, can I can do. I'm not mad at you. Um... And... Um, yeah, Lucas goes down the inside, we break late, we hang it around the outside, and you can see now on the inside, we leave racing room on the outside there, and now side by side on the exit, Lucas has a bit more DRS and battery yeah, used than us, and he flies past us on the pit straight, and yeah, there's nothing we could do, so as much as I'm fighting hardest and fighting as hard as I can to defend these positions, um, I also know to, to keep it clean in this situation, there's no point in me picking up a penalty, in these situations and now Yano is the next car behind us on a medium set of tyres and it's going to be very difficult for us to do anything but going back to you on this straight and but yeah Yano has more battery so it's basically an element of time and not really too much that we can do as we're heading on to the final lap of the race and what was looking like a really strong podium chance even chance of winning this race and at taking the championship lead after this race with where Bari was finishing down in P10 um, has turned into a situation of defending P6 and most likely going to be losing P6 to Yano on the straight as you can see we're not able to follow the cars ahead we even have understeer through the rouge now um, and you can just imagine how much understeer there was in the middle sector as Yano is now flying past us on the straight so yeah to summarize this race is quite um, motivating for me actually um, I believe in life when you get knocked down or you get a situation that is not optimal it's time to refocus it's time to perform and to utilize your best performance in the next upcoming opportunities and those opportunities are the next two races of this championship and I will be doing everything I can in every ounce of energy and motivation I have to maximize these next two races. Ulas did get a penalty in this race and Lucas does have a three second penalty up ahead. So what is P7 will turn into P5. Every chance of the championship is still alive and I am feeling strong, feeling confident to go forward in this championship and give it my best effort on track to maximize this chance of taking this championship here in PSGL. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you in Saudi Arabia for the next race. Coming through the final chicane, it will be P5 at the end result here. Seven points away from the championship lead as we head We're to Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Brendan Lee. Glad to be with Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.